Hey guys, today I am going to talk about is Magic the Gathering getting too expensive and obviously I had to talk about Commander Masters. The collector's edition is $240 a box and you might be like, oh that's cheap for a collector's bo a booster box. Yeah, but it comes with four packs. <laughs> so most collector boxes come with 12 packs. They're, they keep dividing. They really love to divide by this number free, right? So it used to be every booster box had 36 packs. Then they divide by free, and that's now the, the number of packs in the typical collector's edition. And then for Commander Masters, they divide by another free, and then now they're down to four packs. It's really wild when you think about you think about what's going on with this. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's really crazy when you really think about how much um, less cardboard you get every time that you buy this stuff. Right, you get less and less and less and they charge you more and more and more, right? So now they charge you $60 a pack instead of $20 a pack or $10 a pack, right? And this is uh, wild in my opinion. So Magic is getting out of, and, and the thing is that it's not a good deal anymore. So it's okay, like in my opinion, to go to a nice place to eat and it's just a fun place to eat. You had a good service, it was really good. Everything was good. You had a great meal, you had a good time. It was a good experience. It's okay to pay for that. But we are getting a shady experience and we're paying like top rate. It's almost like um, we, it's almost like a restaurant. So I'll use a restaurant analogy. I, in my opinion, it's okay. If you want, you know, a really great steak, you want good seafood, it's okay to pay money to go to eat at a nice restaurant. You had a good experience, the food was excellent, the service was good. It's not okay to pay that same exact money and get treated like shit you know, the company hates you, the customer, the company is doing everything it can to ruin your collection and make your time there very, very bad experience. And that's what Magic the Gathering is right now. It is too expensive. It's something that I really don't recommend um, us, you know, buying more into. I'm going to wait it out. I have plenty of cards to open the rest of my life. Even I couldn't even open them all. I have that big of a seal collection right now. If I open a box a day, it would probably take 10, 20, probably 30, 40 years to open everything. Maybe even longer. Uh, I probably had open like five boxes a day to really accelerate the process. The game is out of control expensive and there's no reason because the quality is much less than it used to be. And back in the olden days, you open an Urza Saga, you get a Cradle, you get a Tula. You could actually, you know, maybe plus EV. I know it sounds crazy, you could actually plus the EV. Now, I mean, actually back in the day, you had these mass box breakers, right? And they would open all these boxes because the single price, and actually, you know who was a ma mass box breaker initially? Drudy Chan, Alpha Investment. Uh, the way that he sold on eBay, would he would open all these boxes and then he would sell these singles and then you could make a very good profit, very good margins on that. Today, it's impossible. You open a box, you lose 40%, 50% of your value. And unless you're a store and you're charging you know, retail, there's no hope. There's not even hope. I, I do this experiment all the time, trying to um, pull these cards and seeing that if you can break even, even at my cost, even at retail, it's, it's hard. It's hard, um, even at my cost, distribution cost, which is actually higher than Amazon cost, and that's probably one of the reasons it's so hard to break even, it's impossible. I used to buy Conspiracy Take the Crown for like $60, $70 a box at Dave and Adams, and you pull 100, $120 retail, which is equivalent to what you paid buy list, and it's a fantastic set. Open cases of that, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. There is no set like that today in my personal opinion, where you can buy it for whatever price you can get it for, open it and sell the singles for you know retail and, and do well enough on that on that that the margins make sense. We can talk about local game stores. You know, I I'm now kind of removed further away from it, and people ask me, you know, did I do? People ask me a lot of questions. You know, if I could do it, would I do it again? People would ask me, oh, I'm starting one, and so on, and and honestly. Like my main takeaway in this is like everything is so tight on the margin side, it's really hard to justify opening a game store. It's really difficult to justify that part of um, magic because things are very tight. And when things get that tight, your profit margin is just not, not good enough. It's all about profit margins. It's all about margins that you have. 
uh, margins and turnover. Those two things are cash flow, margin, turnover, cash flow. So magic is too expensive now. Um, it's out of reach for a lot of people. Uh, I think a lot of younger people, they're not gonna be able to afford $60 packs. They're, I mean, they're not. And when you have more and more people leave the game as they get older, they have more responsibilities, they're starting families, they're buying homes, whatever they're doing, it's not playing magic, I can tell that much. Uh, then yeah, you, are, you have a glut of people who are trying to sell vintage cards and there's just not as many buyers as there used to be. And, and tomorrow there'll be even less buyers and then 10 days from now there'll be even less buyers. It is what it is, you know, it's a cycle of life for most card games. Magic's done, done great, 30 years. It's a long time for any game to exist. Uh, so they should be proud, we should be proud of the game. But doesn't mean it can exist for another 30 years. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Bye guys.